Yo, 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 this is Sol, also known as SPL Gum, also known as Spatial Gum, also known as Grunt, the artist team Skull Grunt. And in this video, we are going to address the question, what the heck is Super Awakening? And we will discuss everything related to this new feature. So what the heck is it? This is the brand new feature slash mechanic of the November 2024 update of Pokemon Masters. And take note that this feature is not for everyone, but it might be for you. Well, how does that work? Well, first things first, guys. Super Awakening is only available for Poke Fairs. So if you have only been scouting for Master Fairs, maybe for Arc Suits, then maybe uh, you don't exactly have a lot of Poke Fairs. You should still have Poke Fairs because the game gives you some Poke Fairs for free if you've been playing. You know, we got lots, some tickets in the past where you can get a Poke Fair for free, or maybe the 10 Fair Scout, maybe you get a Poke Fair here and there. And just in case you're able, to max out and by max out i mean five copies of that poke fair unit not level 150 not six star ex you can super awaken a sync pair without su without exing that sync pair so just in case you have max out your sync pair whether it's by luck with free scouts whether it's by move candies you gave your favorite thing pair strike move candies tech move candy support sprint field move candies or probably the yellow move candies you're able to get them five copies five out of five or whatsoever but again this is just for poke fairs and not every single poke fair although by december 31 says the game or should we say probably more accurately for the people who live in asia and in the east this is probably january 1 so by january 1 next year all poke fairs will finally have super awakening feature unlock so what the heck is this feature well let's take a look at what the game has or what the news of super awakening and let's talk about it from this standpoint super awakening is an all new way of strengthening your sync pairs even further and i do not exactly get the point of this one because our sync pairs are quite strong already. Five out of five, you know, we got upgrades. I think all past Poke Fairs have already gotten five out of five grids. So before it was only three out of five max out for Poke Fairs. And, you know, starting last year, was it last last year? We have had five, uh, four out of five, five out of five tiles added to those Poke Fairs, and now they're stronger than ever. So this is another, and then last year they introduced EX roles, giving our Poke Fairs another role on top, not just Poke Fairs, but all sync pairs, another role on top. So for example, a striker can now act like a tech sync pair. Strikers normally, if you six star EX them, they hit everyone with a tech EX role. Not only do they hit everyone but they'd hit their sing move 1.5 times stronger and so on and so forth just like that so this is this year's little gimmick so this um just to strengthen your sync pairs further after you have them max out and they will get various effects with each super awakening level so how do you um you know super awaken them well you first of all you have to well, this is a painful thing to discuss, but you'll have to use move candies. Or rather, you have to use Super Awakening candies, which the game will give you Super Awakening candies for the new Poke Fairs. Like, for example, Signusuit Ingo is coming soon, Signusuit Emmet is coming, um, Sina is coming, Dexio is coming, Eri is coming. And for the fifth multiple and tenth multiple in their banner, you will receive a Super Awakening candy. But you know, not a lot of you will go five multiples, ten multiples, unless you want to max out your scout points because I think it's 13 multiples and you have your yours scout points already at 300 something something almost at 400 so not a lot of you are actually going to go all the way so you need super awakening candy in order to you know 
raise their super awakening level. The other way to get this is to go to the exchange items menu, which is not yet available, but probably by the next reset, it's gonna be there. You can exchange for a super awakening candy by using your move candies. So if you want to super awaken a striker, you'll have to use a strike move candy. If you want to super awaken a texting pair, tech move candy. So, you know, those candies are really difficult to get. You need 20 move candy coins in order to exchange for a candy. And now they want you to exchange those candies, which will raise your move level to exchange for a super awakening candy. And yeah, so it's basically worse than 10 out of 10 you know people have been worrying that it's it's gonna be like before it was like five copies now it's gonna be 10 copies yes it is 10 copies but worse because if you're lucky with your sync pair scouts you get five copies on just very very few multi pulls and then probably you'll be able to scout for a six copy seven copy well you only get your super awakening level up you know, you max out of five copies, you need candies. There are no others, no other way to get Super Awakening candies other than scouting on the Poke Fairs, the new Poke Fairs, or exchanging move candies for those Super Awakening candies. So it's really expensive, and this is a, uh, I don't know, unless you really love the Sync Pairs, unless you want to have an easy, much easier time with your ultimate battles or something like that, this feature is targeted towards whalers, but probably just the ultimate whalers because even me, who already whales in the game, cannot imagine myself going all the way. I mean, I only have like, I, oh, I have right now 20 yellow move candies saved up and I am not willing to use those move candies on like several of my sync pairs no just one probably just two of my favorites but 20 no way no way it's so hard to get those candies and now unless the game gives us an easier way to get candies candy coins and etc like that or probably super awakening candies this feature can rot in eos you know and uh, side note, people who've been in Vietnam playing this game, I heard about the EOS announcement. I'm not sure whether to feel sad for you guys or happy for you guys because finally you're free from the suffering of this game. I wish I was free from the suffering of this game. I'm stuck. I want to stop. I could not. I've sunk into deep, deep, deep into this rabbit hole, but... This feature, I'm not going to go all out on this feature. But enough ranting, guys. Let's just continue. So, um, by super awakening your sync pairs, for strike sync pairs and sprint sync pairs, they they uh, benefit from the same uh, stat bonuses. Tech and field sync pairs benefit from these and support sync pairs benefit from these. You can check this out right now. So, at Super Awakening level 1, it is consistent for Strikers, Sprint, Tech, Field, and Support. Your stats will be multiplied by 1.1 times. So, let's just take a look at this sync pair, guys. This is Cygnusuit Red and Mega Charizard X. And at level 150, 6-star EX and Mega Evolved, your special attack stat and your attack stat is 583. I've done the math. By multiplying that 1.1 times, your attack stat and your special attack stat goes up to 641. So just that stat, just the attack stat, just the special attack stat, 641 or 42, I don't, I'm not sure, or it probably with no mega evolution, that's 486 times 1.1, 1 .1, that's 534 without Mega Evolving this sync pair. And I remember that this not only affects the uh, attack 
and special attack. It also uh, involves the defense. So 193 defense times 1.1. This becomes 212 defense. And that means this striker is going to be much, much tankier than what it is right now. I'm not sure if it also affects the HP stat, but if it does, that's 868 times 1.1. That means its HP goes up to 954. So that's just like a 1.1 times increase in stats. At Super Awakening level 2, it will power up your moves. For tech and field, it powers up your sync moves and max moves, and you can just check this out. But remember, uh, look at this. At Super Awakening level 5, you get to unlock a Super Awakened passive skill. And this is going to be the bulk of this video. I want to discuss all sync pairs with their personal Super Awakened passive skills. But before we move to that part, I want to just share this um screen so this is where uh, you will see your super awakening thing so there's now a super awakened tab uh in the uh, upgrade thing and you can click on obtain custom super awakening candy because it requires a custom super awakening candy you can exchange your regular super awakening candies for that a custom candy or probably use your candy other candies and stuff like that. As you can see, it requires some tombs, it requires some, some codexes. And then every single one, as you can see over here, Super Awakening Level 1 multiplies all stats by 1.1. Super Awakening Level 2 powers up moves. This is Striker. And at Super Awakening Level 5, you get to unlock a passive skill called Superior and Righteous Heart. And that will add up to your passive skill. So now, let's jump back to my discussion for each one of these passive skills. Are they really super? We'll have to discover one by one. Let's start off by doing this in chronological order based on when these sync pairs have arrived. Starting off with the very, very first Poke Fair that we have, Lance and Dragonite. Superior and Righteous Heart. What this does is that it reduces your sync move countdown at the start of the battle. That's head start 1. Reduces the sync move countdown minus 1. The first time you use your sync move, that's Adrenaline 1. And then it will power up your sync move when your special attack is raised. That's Brain Sync whatever number. I'm not sure if it's Brain Sync 5, Brain Sync 1, Brain Sync 2, Brain Sync 3. This is something that someone will have to test or if it's data mined but this is something that has to be tested so that is just one of the examples let's move on with the others um uh, cynthia is up next with celestics curious mind reduces your sync move countdown the first time it enters a battle each battle now you can enter a battle twice First, head start one. Second time, by sinking using her, you get to evolve into Mega Guard Chomp. And that will trigger every single passive skill you have. So it will also reduce your sync move countdown, just like Adrenaline 1. And then at the start of the battle, it will create a Sandstorm. And then, um, I think. By mega evolving, by using your sync move for the very first time as well, you get to bring in another sandstorm, which is very nice. But I think she already gets sandstorms or sand bringer, sand kicker, or whatever in her passive or rather in her sync grid. So that's something. And then the higher your speed stat is raised, the stronger your sync move is. So that's inertia. So adrenaline one, head start one dust kicker or something like that a plus inertia pretty nice um steven is up next proud of being the best Ours your moves and sync move when your defense is raised how do you use your or how do you raise your defense i think you just use your trainer move or something like that applies the enduring effect to all allied sync pairs after you use your sync move for the very first time it's something nice that's safety net increases the physical moves up next effect of all allied sync pairs by one rank when you use bullet punch nice that means your next move is going to be powered up by 40 percent and not only does this affect him but all your allies nice for steven next we have signa suit red 
A journey in red awaits makes the user sunny first time you use your sync move each battle. So after you mega evolve, you know, you get to bring in sun. And then it raises your special moves up next effect and sing move up next effect by three stat ranks when it enters the battle. You can trigger this twice, first at the start of the battle, second after mega evolution. So that means your sing move is going to be powered up by 30% twice. Your attacks, whether it's blast burn, heat wave, or flare blitz, is going to be powered 120% stronger at the start or after you sync using Cygnus with Red for the very first time. Cygnus with Blue will have you get free move next effect every single time you get hit. Every single time you use a trainer move, you will raise everyone's physical moves up next effect and special moves up next effect. Straightforward. Cygnus with uh, Leaf, a journey in green awaits. In green. Why is it not called a journey in leaf awaits? Interesting. Parse up the moves of all allied sync pairs. When you attack a target that is poisoned or badly poisoned, you can badly poison or poison an enemy by using your um, Razor Leaf or Frenzy Plant on the enemy as long as you have not yet Mega Evolved. Lowers the opponent's Grass Type Rebuff after you use your attack for the very first time. And uh, you will never miss. So probably your first move should be Razor Leaf to give every single opponent a uh, grass type rebuff, making your, your attacks stronger for all allied sync pairs. And hopefully that Razor Leaf would poison or badly poison every single opponent. Nice. Let's move on. This is one of my favorites, Cygnus with N. Later on, I'll be also summarizing my favorites for these sync pairs. But this is one of my favorites, Unova's Hero for uh, N and Zekrom. This gets two sync move power up tiles. Powers up your sync move when its attack is raised. That's brawn sync something. And then not only this, but it also powers up your sync move if the opponent is weak to electric type attacks. How stronger will that sync move is? We, we will not know until someone tests it. And then when you use a trainer move, you get to raise your physical moves up next effect by one rank. And that will power up your attack by 40%. So this sync pair already has quite a lot of multipliers. I think he gets like one multiplier, before, you know, super effective up next effect. If you use your trainer move before anyone gets a sync buff, I think he also gets like static shock somewhere in his grid. And then now he gets two more multipliers which is really nice and i'm curious how much stronger n will be after this upgrade next we have uh, iris alt sadly the previous name was better champion iris the girl who knows the hearts of dragons at the start of the battle you re reduce your sync move count on minus one after you sync you reduce your sync move count on minus one and then increases your physical moves up next effect by three after you use your sync move for the very first time compared to the sickness uh, rather compared to n and zekrom this is kind of boring for me this is something like lance and something the first few sync pairs that we just discussed which is Compared to the others that you'll see maybe later on and just earlier, this is not that great, at least for me. Subway boss in black for Ingo and Excadrill. At the start, after you use your max move, or rather, after you use a status move, and this sync pair has a sandstorm as a status move, it will reduce your sync move count on minus one. Extends the duration of Sandstorm. I really like this. You get to extend that Sandstorm and then it restores 1 MP after you use your single for the very first time. What moves will have MP? Sandstorm. Potion. And then you, I think all, all aboard is his trainer move, which will give everyone a free move next effect if it's sandstorming in some other effects. So this sync pair is quite nice, especially I like that extension of sandstorm over here. Plus every single time you use sandstorm, you get to lower your sync move countdown. I really like this one. And then Emmet is one of the good ones as well. Powers up your sync move during a sandstorm. 
restores your HP when your attack move is successful. I like this. You recover. And then charges your user's move gauge when its attack move hits. And if it hits a lot of other sync pairs, it restores one M move gauge for each hit. So one of the biggest problems with Emmet is how slow he is and how expensive his attacks are with your move gauge. And with this new passive, you get to restore a lot of your, especially if you use rock side, you get to restore three move gauges if it hits three opponents. And then not only that, but you get to restore HP and you get to power up your same move during a sandstorm. So that's nice. Next, we have Lucas and Dialga. Lowers your sync move countdown when you use Dragon Wish. Nice. Increases your special moves up next effect when you use a trainer move, which you will probably use a trainer move quite a lot because this sync pair gets free move next effect after you use your trainer move. Pretty short passive skill. Let's move on. Raihan and Flygon or Anniversary Raihan. Sandy Selfie parse up the moves of allied all allied sync pairs when there's a weather condition. Not only a sandstorm, despite the uh, passive skill name, but also Sunny Day, it also affects everyone, powers up the moves of all allied sync pairs, restores the user's HP when your attack move is successful. You probably will use Twister a lot to hopefully lower the opponent's stats and make the opponent's flinch. So every single time you use Twister or other attacks, you get to restore HP. And his move gauge requirement is not exactly expensive. And then when you activate or anyone in your sync pairs in your team activates weather, terrain, or zone effects, you get to raise special moves up next effect of all allied sync pairs. That means your next attack, not only for Raihan, but also all others, will be powered up 40%. Pretty nice. Cygnus with Morty is still one of the sync pairs that I really often use until now. This is important because... I probably want to give the Super Awakening feature to sync pairs that I still use through the trial of time. So a golden feature or future reduces your sync move countdown down at the start of the battle, extends the duration of sun, okay? Whenever the weather turns sunny, raises the physical moves up next effect and special moves up next effect of all allied sync pairs when you use a status move that's sunny day. All right, you get to lower your sync move countdown. You get to extend the sun. That's probably the most important out of this bunch. The physical moves up, up next effect and special move up next effect is a bonus. But I was hoping for something better for this sync pair, but I guess that's not too bad. Let's move on. Cygnus with Corinna and Marshadow. Shadow Fighter reduces your sync move countdown minus three. The first time you use your sync move. That is a benefit of sprint sync pairs. So Cygnus with Corinna is a tech sync pair with an EX role of support. With this, you also have the benefit of sprint. And then after you use your sync move for the very first time, everyone will get a no stat increases effect. The opponents cannot raise their stats. Powers up all your allied sync pairs. Normal attacks when you attack an opponent without a raise stat. Okay, that's that's okay. That's pretty nice. Again, this is a tech sync pair with a support EX role. And now with a sprint, super awakened role. Next, um, Cygnus with May and Blaziken. Your attacks will never miss. And all your attacks are going to be critical hits. So that means you don't even have to raise your critical hit rate. And when you use a trainer move, you will raise your physical moves up next effect of all allied sync pairs. That means 40% increase in all physical attack damage for all your allied sync pairs. The thing here, critical hits all throughout. Never miss your attacks. Okay. Um, could be better. Next, um, Victor and Rillaboom. Parse up your max move when your attack is raised. You can just use your um, trainer move to max out your attack stat. And your max move is going to hit every single opponent. So I like this. It powers up your max move. It will hit everyone. 
And then at the start of the battle, you get to bring in grassy terrain. So by raising your attack stat, grassy terrain come in, your max move is going to be powered up twice from the grassy terrain and from the passive skill. And then after you use G-Max drum solo, your, uh, your max move, it will bring in another grassy terrain so that your grassy terrain probably will extend until your sync move. And that means the sync pair is going to be just enjoying the benefits of grassy terrain and his grass type moves are gonna you know be powered up so nice let's move on one of my favorites as well signasut diantha and the yansi lowers your sing move countdown at the start of the battle and after using your sing move for the very first time at the start of the battle you bring in rock zone after you sing for the very first time you bring in rock zone and when an ally creates a weather, terrain, or zone effect, it will give every single one of your allies physical moves up next effect, 40% increase in damage. Now, one of my biggest criticisms about Cygnus with Deantha, not really criticism, uh, but one of my biggest uh, complaints about this sync pair when I use her is like, I have to spend a turn using rock wish so that i can go ahead and use diamond storm or rather his her body move diamond storm which is kind of like a waste of turn with this super awakened passive skill we do not need to use rock zone already just at the start of the battle you bring in rock zone you lower your sync move countdown and when the start of the battle her diamond storm body move will be powered up 40 percent because by bringing in Rock Zone, you get a physical moves up next effect. So that's a very nice thing for this sync pair. And again, after you know, one of my complaints as well is Rock Zone does not exactly last for a very long time. We'll have to use Rock Wish again. And the good thing is, after you use your sync move, you bring in Rock Zone again. And then you can continue using her body move, body move, body move, body move, body move. So that's one of my favorites for all for all these this list one of my favorites is signature diantha let's move on um emmet uh, emma rather and crowbat great detective of lumio city um after you use your sing move you lower your sing move countdown lowers the opponent's poison type rebuff after you attack an opponent this only hits one opponent so that opponent will uh, en enjoy the poison type rebuff and then every single time you attack that opponent or any opponent that defense stat will go down, go down, go down, go down. Ah, could be better. Um, this one is also really nice. And I have seen a lot of people complimenting this sing pair. I think this is one of the favorites of everyone. This is Cygnus with Mina and Tapufini. Title Rain, Falling Rain of Hope. When the weather is rainy, you will not get hit by criticals. When... You use Rain Dance. She has Rain Dance. It will also extend the duration of rain, which is nice. And when you use Rain Dance for the very first time, you bring in Fairy Zone. So, uh, yeah, you bring in Fairy Zone. You bring in Rain. You protect all allies. You extend the rain. And I think she already has a passive skill that extends the duration of Fairy Zone. So, uh, nice. It, it just speeds up your battle, speeds up everything, and protects your allies from getting hit by criticals. So, not exactly my personal fave, but noteworthy thing that this is a really, really a helpful ability. So, I guess I have to put her in my list later on. So this is Rosen Copper Roger, Tyler's Hero of Galar. Reduces your sing move countdown minus one. First time it enters a battle. Reduces your sing move countdown minus two after using your max move. And then after using your max move, it will raise your physical moves up next effect by two stat ranks. Her, his attacks hit every single opponent. And that means your um, attack, whatever you choose, whatever attack will be powered up 80% after using your max move. 
Um, Oliana is a similar sync pair, similar to Rose, reduces your sync move countdown minus one, start of the battle, reduces your sync move countdown after you use your max move, and after you use your max move, it will raise your physical moves Agnes effect by two. It's exactly the same. Next, um, Gloria and uh, Cinderace, bursting fiery passion. If you have your attack ma uh, raised, you will power up your max move. And then he, she has three different max moves, which changes her type. If you use G-Max Fireball, you bring in Sunny Day. If you, bring, if you use Max Airstream, you bring in Flying Zone. If you use Max Knuckle, you bring in F Fighting Zone. Very helpful. Powers up your next several attacks. But could be better. Or am I just picky because this is like my favorite... Score Bunny is my favorite, but this could be better. I guess I'm just picky for this one. Nemona and Palmot. Infinite energy to battle. At the start of the battle, you reduce your single move countdown minus one. When you attack an opponent, you raise your physical moves up next effect plus one every single time you attack an opponent. So that means every single one of your attacks following the first attack is going to be 40% stronger and you have a 40% chance of making the opponent flinch. Now at 3 out of 5, Nemona gets access to Staggering 3 in her grid. Staggering 3, 40% chance of making the opponent flinch. With this passive skill given to her, you add another 40% of making the opponent flinch. So every single time you attack the enemy, you have an 80% chance of making the opponent flinch. If that is not OP, I don't know what is. So this, in a way, is the highest possible chance, the sync pair with the highest possible chance, not 100%, because some sync pairs have 100% chance, Correct me if I'm wrong, this sync pair has the highest non-100% chance of flinching the opponent as of this current date. So if you love flinch chain, maybe this sync pair, upgraded, super awakened, is for you. Next, we have Akari and Samurot, or Hisui and Samurot, Heart of, Heart of Heart and Deft of Blade. Start of the battle, you get to lower your sync move countdown. Parse up the moves of all island sync pairs when dark damage field. You can bring in dark damage field by attacking using ceaseless edge. And then reduces attack move damage when dark damage field is applied to the opponent's field of plane. Alright, not too bad. Moving on to um, Penny, Twinkling Star. At the start of the battle, you get to reduce, or rather, um, after you use your sing move for the very first time, you get to lower your sing move countdown minus three. Again, this is a sprint um, benefit. So, um, this sing pair is a support sing pair with an EX roll of strike. So that means you get double sync buff, you get to hit every single opponent, and now you get to speed up your sing move countdown. So, sprint strike support and after you attack the opponent for the very first time you bring in fairy rebuff you hit every single opponent with a fairy type rebuff and just having that fairy type rebuff on the opponent will reduce the damage you receive from the opponent for all your allied sync pairs nice nice okay i don't know what else to say for this sync pair nice nice and probably my personal favorite out of every single one in this list is Elaine and Evie. She's a very, very OP sync pair when she came out. And this just makes her even better. At the start of the battle, you get to lower your sync move countdown minus one. If you have an opponent that's flinching, confused, or trapped, which you will... Confuse, flinch, or trap the opponent like most of the time. You will power up the moves of all allied sync pairs. And then, when you use a trainer move, you get to raise your sync move up next effect. Not physical moves up next effect. Not special moves up next effect. Sync move up next effect is the new feature which came out with Arc Suit Cynthia. So, you can max this out. 10 stat ranks. 
And um, you can use trainer moves infinitely with Elaine. What you have to do is just use quick attack. You will recover one move gauge. And then that trainer move will restore her HP. And then you use quick attack again. You use your trainer move to restore HP. And not only does this just recover her HP and probably make the opponent flinch, confused, trap. But you also raise everyone's sync move up next effect. So on your next sync move, whichever trainer, whichever sync pair that you want to use your sync move on will have their sync move powered up. And if you decide to use the other, the third sync pair for the next sync move, well, that will just pile up, pile up, pile up. And your sync move is going to be very, very strong by that time you decide to use your sync move using whatever sync pair. So this is like my favorite out of the bunch. Unfortunately, I do not exactly have a lot of support move candies. I just have one. Next, we have um, what's up, Grusha and Setaitan, the Sub-Zero Shredder. Reduces special move damage taken when the zone is eye zone. I think she he already has like physical damage reduction when it's eye zone. So having special damage the reduction is also nice. Starts or turns the field of play into eye zone when you use your sing move for the very first time. And this extends the duration of ice zone. And I like uh, extensions. It's nice. So you get to reduce your special move damage. Receive from the opponents. I think you also re receive the physical damage reduction from his passive skills. So nice to have this defensive sync pair. Now, Volo. I think this is the last one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, not the end. Volo and Togepi. Hisui is business smile. After you use your sync move for the very first time, you get to lower your sync move count on minus two. Why not make it three? Restores one MP after you use your sync move for the very first time. Nice. You have potion. I think you also have a no I forgot what his uh trainer move is. I think it's just to power up one of your allies. I'm not sure if that gives you a super effective up next effect or maybe not. But then after or rather every single time you use your sync move, you get the benefits of recovery, synchro healing. Haven't heard that name in like forever. Should we say S move H team HP recovery? Sounds horrible. But synchro healing, you get to restore 20% of all allied sync peers HP every single time you use your sync move. So that's a nice thing. This is not a support sync peer. This is a field unit. Not sure if his if his EX role is support. I totally forgot. But having Synchro Healing built in right now is a very nice touch. Next, Poppy and Tinkathon wor won't work on me. Reduces your Sync move count on minus two when you use a trainer move. And then your attacks will never miss, protects you from critical hits. Very, very simple, I think. She's a striker with a sprint EX role, if I'm not mistaken. So that means you get to use your Sync move much quicker than usual. But very typical, very short. Let's just move on. The ever burning man for Cabo and Senti Scourge powers up the sync moves of all allied sync pairs when you attack a trap opponent. Nice. After you use your max move, you get to bring in sun. And then it extends the duration of sunny weather. Now, um, I often, even if I have Cabo, which is a very defensive sync pair and can deal with recovery, I still use um Cygnus with Morty for the sun. And after having this, probably we will not even need Cygnus with Morty unless the battle will extend for a very long time. But, you know, having this can now bring in sun. Very nice touch. All right. Now moving on to the brand new sync pairs that have come in the November update. We have Cygnus suit, Ingo, all aboard to victory. If the opponents are tr affected by a status condition, take note that I have not yet looked at their kit at the moment. I have not exactly seen their in-depth kit, so I cannot exactly say too much about this sync pair. Turns the field of play into ghost zone. I think this is a field unit. So, 
it will bring in ghost zone after using your max move and then ex it ex extends the duration of ghost zone which i appreciate when the field of play is uh, ghost zone so Powers up the user sync move, turns the field of play into go zone. Okay, not too bad. Moving on to Cygnus with Emmet. Follow the rules and drive safely. This is, I think, a sprint unit. Or did I reverse the two? I'm not sure. Reduces your sync move countdown after you use a trainer move for the very first time. Powers up the sync moves of all allied sync pairs. When you know the circle is applied to the allied field of play and it ex extends the duration of Unova defensive circle. So nice. Uh powers up your sync move. You know, you you know the circle already powers up your sync move damage, already powers up your uh physical move damage. So this is just adding up an extra multiplier to your Unova defensive circle. Moving on, you have rawr with Airy. Reduces your sync move countdown, minus 2 at the uh, start of the battle. Powers up all uh, the moves of allied sync bears. When Paldea defensive circle is allied to the field of play, and after you have low HP, it recovers 60% of your HP. Again, I have not seen the kits of these brand new sync bears in depth yet, but that's just to give you an idea. Alright, Saina, stop right there. Turns the field of play into ice zone. At the start of the battle, increases your special moves up next effect when you enter the battle for the very first time. And enduring effect when your HP is full when it enters the battle, which should apply to most situations except Battle Villa. If you play Battle Villa or Battle Rally and some other mechan, I don't know. But yeah, that's, that's Saina. And for the last but not the least... We have Dexio, almost the same. Uh, reduces your single move countdown minus two. Turns the field of play into psychic terrain. Raises your special moves up next effect by three stat ranks. When start of the battle. So if you notice, I actually say that it's my fave if the effect kind of lasts the entire battle. I'm not really a fan of. The first time it enters a battle, or rather, physical moves up next effect just once, or special moves up next effect just once. I'm not exactly a fan of things like that because it just applies once. That that does not exactly feel worth it if I were to upgrade this sync pair. I'd rather prefer passive skills that extend to the end, like extension of terrain, extension of zone, extension of circles, or maybe sync nuke power up tiles or multipliers. Maybe I prefer sync move power up multipliers rather than physical, or rather than normal attack multipliers. But there are certain exceptions. I also like recovery. I also like, you know, raising the chance of, of flinching and stuff like that. So I have compiled a list of some of my favorites. For you guys to um, check out. But you know. Tell me your favorites in the comment section. I'll start off with my first favorite. N. Zekrom. Again. This is two multipliers. Or two sync move multipliers. In one. It powers up your sync move. If your attack is raised. Not Haymaker. Not the higher your attack is raised. The higher your sync move damage. We do not know how much this multiplier is. But it also is powered up by super powered something. If the opponent is weak to electric type attacks. You get to power up your sync move even more. And then it, after you use your trainer move. You also give yourself a physical moves up next effect. Again I'm curious how stronger. Or how this stacks with all the electric type strikers we have in the game right now. I wonder how how high the ranks he will go up to after this upgrade. Next, I also like Emmet with Archeops. Because this fixes one of his biggest problems which is move gauge management. Now, Rock Slide will recover three move gauges for every single time you use Rock Slide. Not only that, but your sync move will be powered up when there's Sandstorm. And then every single time you attack the opponent, you get to restore some HP. Which, if I'm not mistaken, he benefits or his stats like go up times two or his attack stat is times two when your HP is half 
full, if I'm not mistaken, something like that, or was it 80% full or something? So that HP recovery is really something. And again, that move gauge management fixes like my biggest problem about this sync pair. Another rock type that I really, really like is Cygnus with Diantha because not only does she bring in the end that sync move countdown reduction, but my biggest complaint about bringing rock zone will now be fixed because she can bring in rock zone at the start of the battle. I can use my body move immediately. And then after she sync uses her sync move. Not only does she mega evolve, not only does she lower your sync move countdown again, minus one, but she brings in rock zone again. So I can use my body move, which the only move that I want to use with her is her body move. I can use her body move infinitely now and every single time. An ally, including her, brings in a weather, terrain, or zone effect. I raise everyone's physical moves up next effect plus one. That means 40% increase in damage. This one, not my fave, but I have to give credit to what she can do. She can bring in um, extended rainy or rain now. And if, if you use Rain or Rain Dance for the very first time, she also brings in Fairy Zone. And it will protect all allies from, from uh, critical hits. And I think she has like Body Move Protect, which recovers HP. If you have Rain, it will recover everyone's HP by 40%. Correct me if I'm wrong. And now that Rain can extend. So that's really helpful using her. Nemona is again, I've been saying that this sync pair is like now for me, like I think the highest percent chance of making the opponent flinch. An effective 80% chance every single time she attacks the opponent. You have an 80% chance of making the opponent flinch. And then every single time you attack the opponent, the next attack is going to have physical moves up next effect. That means your moves are going to be 40% stronger each and every time. After the very first attack, Penny is, you know, um, attack the opponent and then receive less damage. This might be helpful for a couple of situations, but just use your attack once on the opponent and forever re receive less damage from the opponent unless the rebuff goes away from ultimate battles. And then by using her sync move, you get to re reduce your sync move countdown minus three. So that effectively makes her strike, support, sprint. And then again, my personal favorite out of the bunch, I probably will be giving her the super awakening thing. Reduces your sync move countdown minus one at the start of the battle. Powers up all attacks of all allied sync pairs when the opponent's flinching, confused, or trapped. You know, you can just use Swift to deal those status conditions on the opponent or status inflictions on those opponents. And whenever you use a trainer move, which you can use infinitely, sync move up next effect. It will affect every single sync pair, not only Elaine, but also your allied sync, your two allied sync pairs, which means your sync move, your sync moves are going to be powered up much, much stronger. And out of everything, this is the only sync pair that has the sync move up next effect out of every single, you know, super awakened thing that we discuss in this video. Last but not the least, I think this is the last one. Yep. Volo and Togepi. More, uh, this thing, the most important thing about this one is synchro healing. After you use your sync move, you get to bring in Fairy Zone. If I'm not mistaken, this is a field unit. And then you get to recover 20% HP every single time you use your Sync move. And then, not only that, but you get to bring in another MP for your trainer moves. That means Potion. That also is your... This is an investment, I think. That's what his trainer move is, which powers up any ally you want to power up. So that makes him... A uh, field unit, a support unit, and a healer. So, those are my favorites. And those are all the 
passive skills or the super awakened passive skills of these sync pairs. Take note that this is not the complete Poke Fair list. There's going to be another batch coming by the end of November or start of December. And then January 1, we will be having all sync, all Poke Fairs having this super awakened ability or feature given to every single sync pair. If you can hold out, maybe save because there might be power creep. Yes, these uh, things are already good, but maybe batch 2 will be better. Batch 3 might be even better or just, you know, forget about this feature completely because unless you have your Poke Fairs maxed out five copies, you cannot super awaken your sync pairs. Even if you have super awakening candies. Even if the game gives us super awakening candies, you cannot use them. So, it's three banners are coming up in the next update. You have your tiered scout for Lance, for Cynthia, for Steven. And they give you custom power-ups for them. Which you can if you're... Sync pairs are not yet max. You can use that to level up your sync, your move level. If you do not have them yet, well, until you get them, you cannot use your custom power ups. You can exchange those custom power ups for super awakening candies. So uh, unless you have them max out, yeah, just ignore this feature. But again, probably don't ignore this video because maybe one day you will find eventually have one sync pair. 5 out of 5. And maybe by that time, you have like 10 Super Awakening. Uh, who knows, right? I mean, it might be 0, but the game might suddenly be kind and give us Super Awakening candies. And by that time, you might find this video helpful. Until the next Super Awakening batch, this is my discussion of Super Awakening. I hope you learned something. Again, they will benefit from stats and only, again, only at Super Awakening level 5 though, do they unlock the passive skill. This is a long journey. You need 5 move candies. That means 10 out of 10, but worse. You also need tomes and codexes. Again, if you are able to unlock the Super Awakening level to level 5, you will be able to get those Super Awakened passive skill, which we discussed. And again, my favorite out of the bunch is Elaine and Evie because of what this can do. And until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button for me. Let me know if you are going to use this feature. Let me know if you, if you have a sync pair, 5 out of 5. And let me know if you have any candies in your inventory. Or are you just saving them up, you know, for arc suits? You cannot use them on arc suits. But are you saving them up for your favorite sync pairs, your p favorite poke pairs, seasonals, variety scouts, or neo champion sync pairs and do not want to use them for this stupid feature? or whatever. Share your thoughts in the comment section. And if you want to help me out monetarily, I'd highly appreciate it if you can support me out on coffee because my bank account is empty right now. After one month, almost one month of no videos and no work at the gym. So I need to recover my funds, but the expenses just don't stop. Because I'm still making these videos for you guys. I'm still making Pokemon Masters content. And the game has not yet reached EOS at least in my country. So, and uh, I would also appreciate it if you want to join the members. You can join the members for as low as one US dollar a month. By clicking on the join button down below, you can become a Pokeball tier member. A huge shout out goes to my great ball tier member, Sophia. Thank you for sticking around with me, as well as my three-year members, Alcin, Roy, Luca, and Jeremy, and my two-year members, Kose and Absaras. Thank you guys so much for your support. And until then, that is the end of this video. I hope you learned something. And again, this is a Whaler feature, but maybe this is your... Maybe you have a sync pair 5 out of 5. Who knows? 
<laughs> this video has gone long enough. It's almost one hour. I gotta shower and then go to sleep. Until then, see you in the next video. Rawr.